Joining us this morning for an important federal funding announcement in Hamilton. I'm Brad Clark, the acting deputy mayor. Before we get started, I would like to acknowledge that the city of Hamilton is situated upon the traditional territories of the Erie Neutral Huron Wendat, Haudenosaunee, and Mississaugas. This land is covered by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt, which was an agreement between the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabek to share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. We further acknowledge that this land is covered by the Between the Lakes Purchase, 1792, between the Crown and the Mississaugas of the First Credit First. Credit First Nation. Today, the city of Hamilton is home to many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island, North America, and we recognize that we must do more to learn about the rich history of this land so that we can better understand our roles as residents, neighbors, partners, and caretakers. Our speakers for today's events are the Honourable Philomena Tassi, Minister of Labour and Member of Parliament for Hamilton West, Ancaster Dundas. Adam Vaughan, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Families, Children and Social Development. Also joining us today are the City of Hamilton's City Manager, Jeanette Smith, the Director of Housing Services, Edward John, and City staff and members of the media. Welcome, everyone. I also want to mention that this event is being live streamed by Cable 14 to the City's YouTube channel inside the City of Hamilton. I would now like to take this opportunity to invite the Honourable Philomena Tassi, Minister of Labour, to deliver her remarks. Minister? Well, hello everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. Thank you, Councillor Clark. It's a it's a pleasure to join you uh, this morning. Thanks for taking time to be with us. Uh, always happy to be with my friend and colleague Adam Vaughan, uh, Deputy Mayor Brad Clark. Fantastic that you're here representing the city. Um, and we know that you know you've all been working hard with respect to ensuring that Hamilton receives the housing that it needs. Um, and the leadership that has been demonstrated is a big reason as to why we're here today. Thanks, Councillor Clark, for that uh, very important land acknowledgement at the beginning of this uh, at the beginning of this announcement. Um, I want to thank Medora and the team at the Y for uh, their hospitality today. I remember not that long ago where we made the announcement for the funding for this building that's behind me, and next month, at the end of next month, 50 units are going to be available homes for Hamiltonians, women and their children. And so it's fantastic, Medora, that we are here to be able to see what investments that we are announcing today produce. And so I want to thank you for the hospitality and generosity in allowing us to use this uh, facility this morning um, as the place where we are going to make this very important announcement. For the past 14 months, it's been um, extremely difficult. Our cities find themselves at the front lines in dealing with COVID-19. The pandemic has shed light on cracks in our society, and it has, it has worsened housing challenges. Budget 2021 announced just a few months ago drew a clear roadmap to building our economy and society back better for a stronger, more resilient Canada. Affordable housing will play a fundamental role in this recovery. And I would like to thank our mayor, Fred Eisenberger, for his advocacy and for his collaboration. We have had many conversations, and I know that he has also had conversations with Minister Hoosen, and it's this advocacy that is extremely important. A few, a few months ago, we announced $10.8 million dollars as an investment to build 45 affordable homes for Hamiltonians through the Rapid Housing Initiative. We're seeing the positive impact that the funding is having on the most vulnerable in our society. The Rapid Housing Initiative has been an absolutely incredible success. We are forging ahead with more investments based on the success that we have witnessed with this investment. In Budget 2021, we announced $1.5 billion in additional funding for the Rapid Housing Initiative. This means we are on track to build 9,200 new affordable homes across Canada under the Rapid Housing Initiative for those who need it most. That's over 9,200 families and individuals who will soon have a safe, secure and well-maintained place to call home. This brings us to the reason why we are here today. I have the pleasure to announce that the City of Hamilton will receive an additional 
million dollars allocated through the city's stream of our rapid housing initiative thanks to the new funding included in budget 2021. This funding will support the rapid creation of an estimated 49 new permanent and affordable housing units for people living in precarious housing situations, as well as for those experiencing homelessness or at risk of experiencing homelessness. These units will be built within 12 months after applicants receive their funding. These targeted investments will not only stimulate our economy, they will also create well-paying jobs. This is great news for workers, for families, and for our economy. Today's announcement builds on previous commitments under the National Housing Strategy here in Hamilton. In fact, it was not that long ago where Minister Hoosen joined us virtually and announced a historic investment of $145 million in, sitting, in city housing Hamilton to repair 6,290 affordable housing units across 66 multifamily buildings in the city of Hamilton over the next nine years. The National Housing Strategy is a 10-year plan that has grown to over $72 billion in investments and is already making a difference to Canadians and their communities across this country. It is because of great outcomes like that, through Budget 2021, we are accelerating existing funding for housing. This will help get more funding out the door more quickly. Since the beginning of the pandemic, we have already invested close to $700 million under Reaching Home to support the organizations that serve people experiencing homelessness. Now, through Budget 2021, we are providing an additional $567 million over two years to this important program starting next year. We are also providing $45 million for a two-year pilot program aimed at reducing homelessness among veterans. We are working to reduce and eventually eliminate the conditions that push people into homelessness. We are doing this through our national housing strategy. Allow me to finish with a few words about housing in our ambitious city. When it, whenever anyone asks me what's my top priority in Hamilton, my response, housing. Rents have gone up, pushing people into homelessness. Housing prices have risen, pushing people into precarious living. I've seen firsthand many Hamiltonians who are struggling to find a safe and affordable place called home. Our government responded. Since 2015, our government has helped over a million Canadians find safe and affordable housing. We have invested millions of dollars in affordable housing projects led by organizations like the YWCA and Indwell. And I have been working on this in Hamilton. We've held three symposium, one in 2018 and two in 2020, to get input from stakeholders and to share information on how to access these funding dollars. We held a stakeholder engagement meeting hosted by the Good Shepherd with officials from CMHC and, of course, my wonderful friend Adam Vaughn. It was a great meeting. I remember Adam praising Hamilton, and Adam, I was so thrilled to hear you say that, saying that the housing activists in this community are one of the best across this country. We have had a great number of advocates and stakeholders in Hamilton who work tirelessly to ensure that Hamiltonians are housed. I have also worked with the City of Hamilton officials and our Mayor to develop affordable housing in our city. I am proud to have worked with hard with Hamilton's affordable housing anti-poverty advocates as well as my Liberal colleagues to have achieved this. And at this point, I just want to give special mention to Adam. You don't find many Adam Vaughns. He has been a tireless worker for housing. His efforts go above and beyond. He has been here three times, two times in, in person, one of them in which he had suffered a fractured ankle, was up half the night in the hospital in the emergency department, and showed up on time, well, maybe 10 minutes late, with crutches in order to be here for the, uh, for the um, symposium that, were, that was being uh, sponsored or, or held there by the Good Shepherd. Adam, I have to tell you, I am so proud to have you as a part of the team. And, uh, and this announcement today is as a result of the great work that you are doing, and I know that you are a dear friend of Hamilton. 
So, folks, let me finish by saying this investment in affordable housing is another big step toward making Hamilton an inclusive, compassionate, and prosperous city that sets an example for all of Canada. Thank you. Merci. Thank you, Minister Tassi. I would now like to invite Adam Vaughan, the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Families, Children and Social Development to the podium. I remember Adam at Queen's Park. He was a strong reporter then, and he has been a strong MP. Thank you very much. Adam, please. I didn't recognize you without your beard. <laughs> I'm, I'm younger now. But with the, ma with the mask, I don't recognize many people these days. But, uh, but uh, it's good to be back in Hamilton. Uh, I just want to thank you for the land acknowledgement and, and, and the detailing of the history that precedes uh, many of our family's arrival into this part of the world. But the, 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 the concept of the dish with one spoon, I think, uh, wampum, it, I, I think is, is the foundational document for so many of us that do work to try and change outcomes for people right across the country. This notion of, of, of sharing our resources, sharing our wealth, uh, and being conscious of the fact that, that uh, we leave legacies when we build projects, when we deliver funding, and when we uh, do work in public with, with community is, is critically important. Um, and so as we do land acknowledgements, yes, it's important to, 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 to note the history of the, the territories where we gather and the people who have had caretaking responsibility towards those, those territories. But there are lessons and there are practices and there are ceremony that, that Indigenous communities across this land have been trying to share with us uh, that we have not been as receptive to as we possibly could be. We, there has been a terrible legacy of colonialism and with that the racism and the tragedies that are now becoming detailed in residential school discoveries. Um, if we're going to uh, really embrace truth and reconciliation, um, we can start with the foundational documents that Indigenous people themselves created uh, and shared with us when, 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 when our ancestors arrived. And this, as I said, this notion of the, of the one dish, one spoon concept uh, speaks so strongly to the work we're doing around housing and the work that Hamilton is doing around housing. I'll also say this about Hamilton. We know that you can't end chronic homelessness without every corner of the country making a contribution, with every city making a contribution, and within every city, every neighborhood stepping up and adding their support towards this, this ambitious endeavor. Hamilton is one of the, 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 the cities we look to federally in terms of how they've built partnership to address this challenge. And I want to thank the mayor and council, obviously, the political leadership here is important and you've got strong advocates like my colleague Philomena. Uh, Bob Bertina has also relentlessly campaigned for this, as has Matthew Green, in fact. There's been a consensus uh, across all parties, across all political stripes, uh, across all social strata, uh, across all forms of marginalization, to realize that together we can solve this crisis in, in Hamilton. But I, w I particularly want to thank uh, Annie DeFalco. Uh, she was a, a, a critical component uh, to the work we did around uh, reprofiling the federal dollars that support the initiatives that are that are that, that uh, support community-based programs around ending homelessness. Annie DeFalco was on the was on the advisory council that reprofiled the homeless partnership strategy into reaching home, critical for, for showing us the way to, to in include people's lived experiences and how we evolve and develop and deliver programs, but also equally focused on making sure that groups that were just outside the reach. Of, of some of the traditional mainstream housing programs need to be centered in the approach uh, to building a better city, building better communities, but ultimately building better lives for people. The Rapid Housing Initiative flows straight from those experiences and that advice. And Hamilton has led the way in, in helping us uh, find a better way forward, but also in delivering dollars in better ways to make sure that the dollars we spend impact those with the strongest and most pronounced vulnerabilities. It's helped us understand um, the role that, that uh, homelessness plays in women's lives and how women experience it differently are harder to count because of the extraordinary measures they take to stay away from the street, away from shelters, to protect their children. Uh, showing us that Indigenous housing is, is a different strategy and a different approach uh, and, that, and that culturally based and culturally sensitive informed processes going forward are part of the way to end chronic homelessness within that population. But at the end of the day, it all comes back to the work that the Hammer has done at putting together a comprehensive civic approach to ending homelessness. The building behind me, 
I, I've lost track of the number of announcements here, but 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 the, but 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 pulling together in dwell, pulling together the charitable sector, the social service sector, pulling together the the, the corporate sector and the business sector as well as civil society through politics. Uh, there is no city in Ontario, let alone Canada, that has a stronger program, and the results speak for themselves. As other cities experience growth in homelessness, Hamilton year after year day after day, month after month, person by person, is lowering the number of people experiencing chronic homelessness. You're showing the way. I wish every city could study your approach. And it pays off because cities like London are referred to take a look at your program. I've referred to a housing project with churches in Toronto and said, go talk to Indwell and talk about how they've worked with city officials to achieve great results. You are not just helping Hamiltonians, you're helping all of us in Canada solve this terrible crisis. And, and the Rapid Housing Initiative is just the latest installment. It builds on top of the block funding we delivered earlier this year to the Hamilton Wentworth Housing Society to fix and repair housing. It builds on the buildings like we see behind us and the new supportive housing units that are dotted right across Hamilton. But this latest installment is the money directed directly, 100% capital dollars directed directly to cities so that they can fine tune and immediately house people to keep them safe during the pandemic, but not just provide safety now, but lock in that safety forever. You know, you can spend millions of dollars managing homelessness. It's more, effective, it's more effective to spend millions of dollars ending homelessness, and that's exactly what Rapid Housing intends to do. So this time last year, we were fighting in cabinet for the dollars. We got a billion dollars in the fall, and by, by January, had, had housed close to 5,000 Canadians that had been previously homeless. We added $1.5 billion to, to, to the mix this year around, uh, less than six months later, and we hope to even do stronger, uh, get stronger results with the $1.5 billion. But the critical part to it, and again, this is where Hamilton came in and showed us how to do it, is working directly with cities. Not going through Queen's Park, not that they aren't good partners too, but in working directly with cities, what we found is that we can get results faster. And speed is of the essence here. If you're going to keep somebody safe from COVID, they have to be isolated immediately before they get vaccinated. Isolation is key, but isolation doesn't happen without housing. And the dollars we've announced today, the $12.9 million for Hamilton as part of phase two, is going to be supplemented by the project stream where many applications in and around the Hamilton and Niagara area have also put applications in. We are building on success, building a stronger future by building housing for everybody quickly. We've also prioritized groups that have had a difficult time navigating or accessing housing through this emergency system. So for example, 25% of the units will be directed towards housing programs that are led and delivered for women in this country. We've also achieved in this file something I don't think any other housing program has ever achieved in the urban and rural space, which is Indigenous-led housing providers claim for close to 40% of the dollars and units in the first phase, and we expect to replicate that as well. So the urban, rural, and northern housing stream, which we've committed to and are waiting for the, 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 the Indigenous housing providers to, to, to create the, the new national organization. In the interim, our funding programs are getting results in those areas as well. And I know for Hamilton, with your proximity to, to so many Indigenous reserves and with a collection of, of, of so many different people from different nations, this is also critically important work at ending homelessness. And so Hamilton once again has led the way on that front as well. And the final thing I'll say is this, is that, is that we're not done yet. We have work to do to end chronic homelessness. There are approximately 38,000 people who experience chronic homelessness every year in this country. Close to 250,000 people who experience it once and never come back, thank goodness. But for the chronically um, underhoused and precariously housed, um, the Rapid Housing Initiative will have housed almost a third of that total number within a year. If we can add just another year and a year after that, uh, the goal of ending chronic homelessness becomes that much more real. But it will not happen, it cannot happen, and in fact I don't think it should happen if we don't have cities leading the way. And Hamilton has done such extraordinary work in dedicating its civic uh, goal to ending chronic homelessness. I just want to say thank you, because uh, the partnership has been fantastic, uh, and, and, and it's been such strong advocacy that it also helped us get money to, to, to Niagara and to St. Catharines out of this program. And we know that moving upstream and prevention is key to getting better results in Hamilton. So your results also paid off for other cities in this area and and thank you very much and with that with the musical cue I guess like the it's like the Academy Awards my time is up the microphone is dropping I'll hand it back to the MC. thank you Adam very much for your kind comments about Hamilton but your passion and your dedication to to housing it, it, it you you amplify it it's amazing thank you so much today's announcement could not be more timely ladies and gentlemen one of the unforeseen consequences of the covid 19 pandemic has been the impact on the housing market and the challenge of addressing homelessness 
Today's announcement of funding through the federal government's Rapid Housing Initiative will support those in our communities who need it the most. This investment underscores the shared commitment of the federal government and the City of Hamilton to addressing homelessness and the need for more affordable housing in our community. On behalf of the City of Hamilton, Mayor Fred Eisenberger, the City Council, our staff and our citizens, uh, we want to express our sincere gratitude to the federal government for this important investment under the Rapid Housing Initiative. Thank you very much. I think we all agree everyone deserves to have a safe, affordable place to call home. This funding will support some of the most vulnerable individuals and families with 49 new affordable homes. Thank you, Adam Vaughn. Thank you, Philomena Tassi. You are wonderful partners to the City of Hamilton. We appreciate all of your efforts. I would now like to call upon Medora Upal, the Director of Operations at the YWCA, to say a few words. Medora, please. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Clark, and thank you, Minister Tassi and MP Vaughn and other guests who've joined us today from the city. We at YWCA Hamilton remain so thankful for the initial investment of over $10 million by the federal government, which has provided almost half of the funds required to complete the new Putman family YWCA behind me. A first of its kind, women's only affordable housing in our Hamilton community. We are also thankful for the investment we receive from both the province and the municipal governments, the City of Hamilton. Our heartfelt thanks goes to the donors who've also generously contributed to our campaign to raise the remaining $5 million to finish the building, and we're halfway there at this point. Standing tall behind me, the new Putman family YWCA will address the lack of affordable housing in Hamilton and will provide women and women-led families with not only a place to call home, but a place that they will belong to. We have prioritized affordable housing for those who are most marginalized in our community. Soon to move in will be women and children who've experienced violence and homelessness, women who, and their children who are indigenous, and those who have developmental disabilities. The Putman family YWCA will welcome our community. We look forward to eventually opening our community doors to youth and seniors to access spaces here, along with the Center of Innovation to strengthen women's ma labor market participation. So we, we want to applaud the uh, announcement that was made today. Uh, it's very exciting for all of us in Hamilton and across the country. And we want to ask that governments continue to make ongoing and significant investments in affordable housing in Hamilton and in other communities to prioritize those who are overrepresented within the homeless population and those who are precariously housed. I'm talking about women who are survivors of violence and their children, and Indigenous people, women, and their families. These investments are more important now than ever before as we recover and rebuild from the pandemic and create communities which are equitable for all. So thank you for coming out today and joining us, and thank you for choosing our building to have this event. Thank you, Medora. Now I'd like to call upon Gemma Spadafora from Mayor Eisenberger's office to moderate a short media question and answer period. Gemma. Thank you everyone for joining us today. I'll call on, upon the media one at a time. You'll ask one question and one follow-up. Once called upon, can you please state your name, which media outlet you're with, and who your question is directed to? You can now raise your hand um, if you have any questions. Sean? Sean Cowan from Sean Cowan from CHCH. 49 units. How many uh, individuals will this serve? And then how many people are still on the waiting list for housing in Hamilton? So this building is 50 units. There's one, two, and three bedrooms for women and women-led families. Um, and in terms of the waiting list, I'll let uh, Deputy Mayor answer. Oh, Mr. John. or Edward John, Director of Housing Services. Thank you. And in terms of the housing wait list, right now we have approximately 5,400 uh, names and households that are on it. Of that, approximately uh, 4,000 are those in, in need. Um, the others are on actual wait list to change and transfer through that process. Thank you. And, and to be clear, today's announcement around rapid housing is targeting those who are living in the most precarious of situations. So that's shelters, sleeping rough, and, 
in, in parks and ravines and what have you. Um, the $12.9 million, it, it's forecast to create about 50 units of housing. Uh, the composition of those, though, we don't know whether couples or singles will move into one-bedroom units. We don't know whether uh, the, there will be an opportunity to, to expand into family shelters for, for, for families that are experiencing homelessness. So the, the, the tenant model varies from city to city and from project to project. The real goal here, though, is to create housing quickly, to, to, to explore the opportunity to pick up assets. For example, uh, there are a lot of uh, motels that, that have been struggling due to the closed borders and tourism being restricted, and some of those, those, those properties are now becoming available to, to, to cities like Hamilton or to, to community organizations. One of the, the magical pieces of the Rapid Housing Initiative is it allows you to buy, say, a motel, and if you think you turn your mind to what a typical motel is, sort of that L-shaped group of double door, you know, double story rooms um, with a communal kitchen and a communal eating area. It's a good place to, to start supportive housing, but it's unlikely that you're going to need the parking lot for lots and lots of cars. What this allows the city of Hamilton to do is to acquire the site to house people immediately, to hit the goals of the National Housing Strategy and, and Rapid Housing Initiative, and then to turn that parking lot downstream to partner it in with the co-investment fund and other organizations like the YWCA, and to turn the parking lot into new housing opportunities. So this is this is solid 100% capital funding to get housing built immediately within the next 60 days over the next year, but it's also sets Hamilton up for, for more success downstream. And so some of these projects will in fact grow over time because the $72 billion National Housing strategy is there to do just that and with the repair portfolio now spoken to in Hamilton Hamilton can focus not on repairing existing uh, units and keeping them online but can actually now go forward in terms of acquiring new units and expand to, 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 to take a big bite out of that wait list the other part of it which I think is just as important is it, that doesn't get spoken to is enough is that the supports for this housing are critical Many, many people who experience in homelessness, poverty may put you on the street, but it's usually a health care issue that keeps you on the street. The reference to brain injury and to de undiagnosed developmental disabilities, those are just as significant a set of medical issues driving homelessness as addiction and mental health issues are. And so we have to start to understand housing as a health care issue. We have to understand it as a human rights issue. And as we start to invest these dollars, the supports for these house, these new homes are just as critical as the doors and the roofs and the, and the services within. It's also the support from the community to deal with addiction, to deal with mental health, to deal with brain injury, to deal with developmental disabilities, to deal with whatever issues are keeping you in a precarious situation. And on that front, the, the, the Homeless Partnership Strategy, which is now called Reaching Home, Reaching Home when we took office in 2015 had been pegged at about $50 million a year, had been frozen since 1999 when it was introduced. We've added new communities, we've added funding, it's now at a half billion dollars a year. This helps the, the system wrap around these housing uh, units so that the services can wrap around people on an individual need and keep them housed. So it's not just a question of moving pe people from shelter to home, it's also about keeping them housed and keeping them housed with supports that they require to make a contribution back to the community as they build their lives back stronger, to build back Hamilton stronger. And we think that comprehensively, as a, as a complete system of housing supports, this is why rapid housing is so critical, because it's 100% capital dollars, gets people housed, and it actually starts to save cities money so they can reinvest in stronger services to keep people housed and keep communities safe. MP Vaughn, can you tell us when we'll hear about... You're going to have to yell. I'm going to have to yell, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's better. That's Is that better? Okay. Yeah. Uh, MP Vaughn, can you tell us when we'll hear the result of the community stream applications that you mentioned? The community stream applications, when will we hear the results of those? So the, the billion and a half dollars has been split into $500 million for cities and a billion dollars for, for, for the project stream. We have, um, as a result of the, the intake on the first phase, a significant number of projects which have qualified for funding but didn't receive funding. And so we're going down through that list to realize projects that, that were at the right, got to the finish line but didn't get to, to, to break the ribbon, so to speak. And so those announcements will be coming shortly. We've had to revisit a couple of the applications. In some cases, we've had provincial governments. In Manitoba, there's a great shelter for women in downtown Winnipeg that, that received funding for services but, but fell just short of us getting them capital dollars. We've now found a way to get those capital dollars through the city of Winnipeg directly to that organization. They've got provincial funding and they should be able to realize that very shortly. But on the project stream, we're going down through the list of approved projects and we're getting the funding out the door as quickly as possible. If you're an applicant who's put a project in and circumstances have changed, you've either got support from a city or support from a local indigenous government or support from the provincial or territorial government, or if you've had a, a change in location, a, a new building that was built 
bigger, that had better opportunities had come up. We're, we're re-examining those applications and those dollars should be out the door by mid-August.